everybody. Jane here again with my art teachings. So today I'm going to talk about art and ascension because art is directly related to creation, imagination and manifestation. So as we move away from 3D and into 4D, we're going to be forging the destiny of our souls and Mother Earth toward 5D and beyond. And this is gonna require tools to support that journey. And one of those tools is, in fact, art. And now I'm gonna show you how. Because creating art from the soul facilitates a closer proximity to higher vibrations, i.e. create a source. Also what happens when you create art is that you lose time. And when that happens, you go outside of your body and magic happens. It's just a natural thing that happens. So, and that's a, more evidence of connecting to source and cosmos, but I'll talk more about that later because first I want to talk about the importance of art because we have to learn the true purpose of art using our God-given artistic ability to leap into higher vibrational realms. So as we throw off the mantle of fear and embrace the power of love as we're creating, the negative programming regarding art falls away like a snake shedding its skin. And the heart and the mind opens up and allows our unique artistic ability to emerge from our soul as we create. And the essence of our soul is revealed. And then we visibly decode that right before our eyes as we work. So that is where original art comes from. And also art is the expression of human creative skill and imagination. And art can manifest as music, as we know, as singing, sculpture, and many other forms. But for the sake of this exercise, I'm using visual art as it is the most accessible after song, but singing is invisible audio and art is a visible, tangible element. That's why I'm using visual art. So let's go back to the negative programming of art that we need to overcome. So the most prominent negative programming attached to art, you've probably said it yourself, I can't even draw a stick figure mantra. And there's loads of examples, like, you know, the old starving artist concept. But if I'm going to speak about them all, I'm going to give them life and energy. So I'm going to stay away from that right now. But you can rest assured that every think tank on planet Earth has worked very hard for decades to keep the power of art a secret because they know that creative people are hard to control and let loose on mass, runaway freight train. So it's too late now for them because the great art awakening is upon us along with all the other great awakenings that we're experiencing now and currently embracing. But the thing about art is that it is a secret ingredient that sparks our creative neurons out of slumber and once awoken can be applied to all aspects of life. This is why it is imperative to awaken those creative neurons through art and unfreeze the art frozen and teach art to children from a very young age because the process of lighting up the creative neurons, I believe, is directly related to rousing our sleeping so-called junk DNA. So the truth is that most humans are born creative geniuses. I've spoken about the study that NASA has done. Not that I think NASA is anything wonderful, but they did do a study, fairly in-depth study, that said that 98% of people are born creative geniuses. And then they showed how that declines as we go through the indoctrination systems. So, because we are creative geniuses, all it requires is that you know and acknowledge this in order to create a visual. So this is the point where we take that great leap of faith and reach deep into self to connect 
heart, hand, and soul with Creator Source. This is where we turn all incoming exterior programming devices off in order to create a channel to open our personal creative path to allow entry from cosmos and exit the creativity from self. So you already know that you can imagine anything, but can you render it, draw it, paint it? Okay, here's the fun part. It's irrelevant because you can feel it. If you can feel it, you can express it through line, shape, color, dark and light. Even if you have never attempted to draw or paint in your life, you cannot be deterred now from experimenting, knowing what you know now. And on the other end of the spectrum, true artistic tenacity comes from being able to hold all the basic elements of art in your head at once with each stroke you make toward the desired outcome. But don't worry about that right now. With practice, you'll get there much faster if you set it as a subconscious goal while you're creating. So try not to judge your work in progress as well for by the very fact that it is incomplete, it will not please you until it is finished. So where to go from here? Bring all the negative thought patterns to a screaming halt and say, I always knew I was an artist. I can do this. So there are a million ways to ignite inspiration if that's what you're looking for to start. Nature, poetry, music, experiences, passion, imagination, dreams, meditation, even doodles. The trick is go into a deep meditation to forage for images from the cosmos. And upon emerging from this lucid state, you quickly make some rudimentary sketches of your visions so that you don't forget them. Very hard to remember dreams for some people. And if you don't meditate, throw that out the window and just start doodling because when you're doodling, your subconscious self comes out in the form of lines, almost like a fingerprint. And then ideally a quick crash course in the absolute basics of art would do no harm. But if you are eager to start, the tools are very simple to come by. Think of it, pencil and paper, pen and paper, um, paints and canvas, a little bit more difficult to get hold of, but within reach of most people. And tutorials for art abound online. And I personally wrote a book called Splat that covers all the basics of art to serve this purpose alone to back up my art philosophy. So you need a special place or space to create for optimum output while you're working, a nice environment, calm as possible, quiet. And it's also a good idea to play some music while you're working because some music can take you to higher realms and dimensions. But also it has to be music without words because words has the propensity to bring you into the world of spells and bring you back down into 3D. And music without words assists your consciousness into higher planes as you work. So listen to music in 432 hertz rather than 430 if you can. And um, by the way, tones in 340 hertz are on the edge of deep brain stimulation. So if you really want to get those neurons going, listen to music or sounds in 340. Once you've got your materials and space in place, a positive meditation can propel you forward. So feel free to write your own positive meditation or use this one. Creation meditation. I go easily into the sacred zone of creation. Take a deep breath. I am a creator. My hand, heart, and subconscious mind work together on my behalf. 
to bring visions to life in a most pleasing form to myself and others. As I go so easily into the zone of creation, I tap into the cosmic wisdom base, which sets no limits to my creativity. The same energy and consciousness that created the ingeniousness of this earth flows through me as I create. I have everything I need to bring my vision to life. I am learning everything I need to know to create work of the highest aesthetic coursing through me from source. Think of it like this. Thou art art. Thou art creative consciousness itself. So pray tell, how can aspects of art help me ascend? So then envisage yourself seated at the right hand of great creator, as we are all meant to do. When we collectively embrace our creative selves, beautiful healing aesthetic environs begin to emerge for the enjoyment and uplifting of all. When artistically infused imaginations applying their creative neurons to a much higher standard of existence proliferate around us, we are all affected positively by these artistic contributions to the whole. Enhanced creativity applied to technological breakthroughs such as cleansing the planet, creating clean energy, feeding the hungry, sheltering the homeless, and all the activities that are in service to others speeds up humanity's destiny toward ascension. So you've been taught that art is nowhere near this powerful. And to even think that there is a connection between art and ascension is a preposterous notion. This is exactly why we never learn the truth about the power of art. We were never taught that artistry itself is the holistic alchemy that connects all disciplines together as ether permeates everything with electromagnetic energy. Creativity is also energized by the ethers. The pulse of the multiverse flows through everything from whence all thought comes. Also, artistry and creativity can therefore be applied to everything. In fact, you can see when it is not, and we naturally have a guttural response to ugliness and are repelled by it. And beauty has a way of seducing us and inviting us closer. Also, for too long, we've been naively seduced by synthetic and superficial material pursuits to garner feelings of fulfillment. But now we are starting to see it for the fast dying and futile distraction it really is. We see the destruction that endless commerce and gluttony wreaks upon our magnificent Tara and all sentient beings that dwell herein. The fading of Gaia's once glorious self is happening right before our eyes and can no longer go unnoticed and unattended as we know, we know this. So as our collective consciousness raises and we introduce creative healing protocols throughout the realm, we naturally shift into this state of love and compassion, empathy, and the strength and fortitude to act on behalf of the greatest artist ever known, our Mother Earth. If you look around at healing environs using light and sound and natural backdrops in an artistically pleasing way, we're drawn to them. We're drawn to environs that mimic nature, employ natural curves and integrate sacred geometry. Those are the most alluring because our bodies have sacred geometry and we're about 70% water. So we naturally resonate toward those elements like sacred geometry, Fibonacci scale, the golden mean. 
So going back to using your creative genius, which you were born with, and if you apply your creativity to your field of specialization, for example, nutrition, horticulture, science, quantum physics, and more, this world will become the Eden it was always intended to be. That is where earth and heaven are once again connected. The resonance of aesthetic beauty alone has the ability to raise the vibration of the entire earth to heights that no dark force can survive in or penetrate, actually. And ascension of the masses is far more likely to occur in an environment that echoes the majesty of the elementals, angels, and gods than it does from, say, a cold, bureaucratic, authoritarian, governmental institution. So the combination of connecting one's consciousness to the cosmos and being in a state of grace due to an aesthetically pleasing environment naturally elevates the state of humans and opens up a path to ascension. We no longer need to traverse the world looking for that quiet mountaintop away from the maddening crowds because now we found a way to live ascension by embracing our long dormant creativity and applying it to everyday existence. The act of being creative takes us outside the box that confines us to time and slavery. It's that powerful. Speaking of time, when you're in a creative mood, mode as i said before you tend to lose time which is in fact evidence of connecting to source and cosmos and to exist outside the parameters of time is a form of astral travel so now you're in a state of less density with much higher perceptive abilities because you've discarded the weight of matter that holds you down and when you create art, you, you're using the three-dimensional density tools of matter, which are art materials, in order to reach or as a vehicle to get to the higher vibratory realms. And guess what? You're traveling on a spaceship of your own making. And you bring back to Earth art that is infused with higher dimensionality. So the very act of creating art is therefore one of many, actually, facilitators or paths to ascension. So what shall you draw into the world? What future would you paint? Build it and they will come, is now render it and it shall manifest. As Aquarius now bathes us in her unborn waters toward the golden age, allow creator source to flow through you while you ponder an ascended and glorious vision of earth. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you come back for more. Don't forget to comment, subscribe and all that stuff. Okay. Bye. Also, just to let you know, I do have a workshop at the New Earth University, if you go to their website you can look for a workshop called Painting from the Soul and you can register and enroll for that. You can listen to it multiple times and I'm also hoping in the future to do a new one. So keep updated and check back often to their website. It's part of the Earth Horizon 
it's a fractal of the new earth horizon which is a platform for planetary stewardship and unification so if you like what you saw here today I can take you through in much more detail in the workshop and it's structured to show you just how art has been messed with and the potential of art Thank you.